Hello. It's been some time since I've uploaded anything. I've been busy with finishing my die catalog, and then I decided to re-swatch a bunch of my inks, and I've worked on home decor projects, and just day-to-day -day living too, I guess. But I thought I would share my finished um, die catalog so you can see how that turned out. Um, I found these binders on at Walmart, and they were on clearance for next to nothing, so I bought several boxes of them and put labels in. Um, and I thought I would go through how I've labeled my binders and what's in them, and feel free to tell me if you think other names would be better for these. Um, this one is Focal Images, and are basically dies that cover the whole card or a good part of the card. So all you would need is um, to do something in the background, the die, and a sentiment. And it pretty much makes your card. And some of these are more frames type stuff than they are focal images. But... Most of them are nature-related, but some of them not so much. So, that's that one. I've got to figure out where I'm going to put the binders, uh, because I think the next thing I'm going to do is go through my stamps. I need to get those reorganized, and having a catalog of those would be helpful, too. These are background dies which is kind of self-explanatory. I mean, some of these could be focal images, but for the most part, it's just backgrounds. Or what would one would consider to be a background. And layering dies. And I've ended up with two binders for these. And I've got all my X cut and florals from scrapbooking made simple and this one and then the other one is what was left over because um, I've got so many of these and of course with the layering um with the multiple sheets of paper of course these are going to be thicker too so and Just to give an example of what's in this one. And I labeled this one Nature and Holiday from Scrapbooking Made Simple. And then Birch Press. And then this is the Birch Press stuff here. I wanted to have that on the binder just so that I could easily find the Birch Press dies if I wanted to see them for a project or something. And then this is word and alphabet dies. Sorry, I've got the phone rather close to the table, so I don't have much room between things. And then, of course, I just added these to my collection. Really like the fonts. And... And, of course, the alphabets. My desk is overflowing with stuff. I, what you're seeing is the only clear space on my desk, and it's about 17 inches by 10 inches, so... <laughs> That's one reason that the camera is so close. And then I've got... I called these embellishment dies, so... If you've got a better name for this, I would greatly love to hear because I wasn't sure what else to call them. But it's, some of these are smaller scene type dies that you use and combine together to do different things. 
Um, a lot of them are um, things that you add together to create a card. The one reason that I have all of these together is they are small enough to go through my Gemini Go or my um, Sidekick. So that's why I put all of these in this because if I'm working on something and I don't want to have to get up to find it, I can just come to this binder. And most of these dies, as you can tell, are pretty small. They're more little pieces that you would add to a design, not necessarily the design itself, or you use them together. They themselves, each individual die itself isn't enough to really make the card, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just glad to have all that stuff in binders. And here is my ink swatch book. I've got my embossing powders in here. And sorry, this is hitting me on the nose. Not meaning to do that. I'll try to... These are pigment inks here and archival inks. And these I'd already had um swatched so i'm just gonna leave these as they are but i went through all of my dye based inks and some of my um hybrids and re-swatched them one i wanted the colors um at the edge so that i could easily layer the swatches up so if i wanted to see how this was going to look with this, I could easily pull the swatches out and layer it up like that to see how well the colors really work together. Um, sometimes when you have just different shades of a color, some shades will work a little bit better than others with different colors. So it nice to be able to do that especially with layering stamps um you saw how well that looked with it but if you were to take old paper and pair it with it mm, that's not going to look as well so being able to do that also with the layering stamps and stuff being able to see what the generational stamping of the ink looks like is kind of helpful. Um, the top color is stamping it out twice. And then here in this first box, it's the first generation stamping it once, coming over and stamping it again, and then again. Um, I'm not really sure how people label the generations of the stamping. I guess this here would be considered first generation. I don't really know. <laughs> But the other box is this color and then building up on that color. So I stamped the whole box twice and then stamped here a third time. And then here I stamped four times to get the most rich of the color. Most of these you really can't tell much of a difference but some of them you really can. I don't know if this is going to show up. Here is a little lighter and you can tell the difference in the darkness. And for... It might help if I put that back in the right place. For layering stamps, that can make a difference if you're needing something that's... just a little bit darker than what you've got if you stamp it multiple times sometimes that will make it look a little bit darker um, Cajun Craze actually might have been a better example you can see here you can see how the color deepens and darkens the more you stamp it so I have neglected to um, do my blender pen and water on those 
that's what the bottom boxes are is blender pen and then how it looks with water um the blender pen mostly because it shows the gradation as you pull it out it's to me it's a little easier to do that with a blender pen than it is with the water um and the water is a little more water affects it a little differently than blender pen some colors were affected quite a bit by The water and some not so much but in some colors I didn't dry the stamps off very well so especially with the distress oxide what you're seeing is more of the oxide color than the true color but I tried to when placing it in here, take into consideration the true color, not the oxidization of that color. But this is what it all looks like. And I rearranged some of the colors a little bit. You can see with the pine needles here. How it's, when it oxidizes, it tends to turn a little bit blue. But of course, it's actually a green color, so I keep it with the green. And some colors don't work very well with blender pens like the Hero Arts. Some of the colors seem to be okay with the blender pen, but a lot of them, it seemed to gum up the blender pen or something. And it did it with the water brush pen, too, so... I marked all of those, and of course the Nouveau's I knew wouldn't work with either of those, so that's another reason I wanted to switch to this format for the dye inks, is so that I knew um, which ones were able to be used with those mediums, the water and the blender pen. Um, and of course the oxide, because it has that pigment in it I didn't want to take a chance on using it with the blender pen but it does work really well with the water so and I tried to be consistent with the ink brands like all the hero arts I labeled that way even though some of the colors when I first started swatching I was doing the hero arts with the blender pen and the water and some of them seemed to work really really well but I noticed after a period of time how it was affecting the blender pen and that, and I was like, well, uh, it's just easier and better to just go ahead and label them all. And so I've got the brand name here and the name of the color listed. And I won't say how many of these I have. A lot of them, the colors are very similar. You really can't tell that much of a difference. Um, of course, with the Tim Holtz Oxide and Distress Ink, one would expect them to be very similar, but it gives a good uh, indication of what brands, too, are very similar. Like the Sweet Sugar Plum from Stampin' Up is very close to the Spanish Sangria. But anyway, that's what I've been up to. Sorry, didn't mean to slap you in the nose again without warning. <laughs> My next plan is to get to the stamps, make it a lot easier to um, plan out projects and things, knowing what stamps I have and stuff. Um, real quick, I'll show you the stamp sets that I used for the, um, ink swatching. Sorry, I'm a little, um, this I just cut out four of the little swatch box things there for 
my ink swatches and then a separate set and these of course are from waffle flower and then I used these I used this one to do the top and then this one and this one to fill in here I use this to stamp in twice for the repeat stamping and then I used this to do the smaller sections where I needed to add more ink so the set has well paid for itself <laughs> That's what I used for the ink swatching. So, and I don't know if I showed my desk the last time I did a video or if I'd already, if I didn't paint it until after the last video, but I painted the top and stenciled and stenciled some more and um, sprayed a protective coating on it. Uh, I don't know if it was a varnish or what it was, but, um, and then I don't know if, I don't want to pull this back too far because I've got stuff sitting on it, but that's what it looks like. And then I've got a silicone mat over top of it and it's a translucent one and it's rather large. It covers my whole area in front of me and then probably about six inches or so on either side so there's no I don't have to worry much about stuff running over the edge and getting under and ruining the paint and then it fits from front to back of the table so it's pretty good coverage and I found it on Amazon and I got a couple of more to lay out and if I need to do ink blending or ink smushing or something like that because of course this would interfere with the colors and stuff so I got a smaller white one to work on for that that I can pull out as needed but I'm pretty happy with the paint job on the table it's nice um the flower motif here is an Altenew stencil just matter of interest I guess it's a layering stencil so, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found something in this. Um, I can't say that this was probably terribly entertaining, but helpful or informative. Um, something along those lines. And I hope everyone has a happy holiday. Bye.